President, I want to again thank the Majority Leader for bringing to the attention of this body the tragedy of those servicemen who lost their lives and the fact that unfortunately they have been notified improperly, I believe, that they will not be, their families will not be being paid the tax-free death gratuity that they are entitled under law. This is wrong. Every member of this body agrees this is wrong. Every Republican agrees it is wrong. And I'm confident every, every Democrat agrees it is wrong as well. And indeed, the way this announcement was made was highly troubling. The Department of Defense notified our military families via Twitter that those service members who die in battle will not be paid their tax-free death gratuities due to the partial federal government shutdown. I think this is yet another pattern that we have seen distressingly from the Obama administration of politicizing this shutdown and playing partisan games to maximize the pain that is inflicted on Americans. It is part and parcel with the pattern we've seen barricading the World War II Memorial, barricading the parking lot at Mount Vernon, George Washington's home, even though Mount Vernon is privately operated, barricading the roads leaving Mount Rushmore, even though they are state roads and not federal roads. And the actions by the Department of Defense are also contrary to the statute that this body just passed. The military death gratuity is by statute a pay and personnel benefit. And accordingly, it is clearly funded by Public Law 113-39, the Pay Our Military Act that was passed in a bipartisan manner this week. We already acted to prevent this, and unfortunately, the Defense Department is declining to follow that law that we passed. The legislation that this body already passed would immediately act to take the families of those soldiers and sailors and airmen and Marines whose lives are tragically taken, to take them off the table and say, regardless of what happens in a government shutdown, we're going to stand by the men and women fighting for America. And indeed, the House of Representatives has to introduced a bipartisan bill to immediately fund death gratuity payments. When that bill is passed, the Senate should pass that bill immediately. Indeed, the Pentagon should abandon this policy to begin with and simply follow the law that was already passed. But if they don't, I call upon all 100 senators to come together to listen to the majority leader who spoke powerfully about the need to stand by our servicemen and women whose, whose lives are tragically taken. And when the House passes that bill, which I am confident it will do so with considerable speed, I would call upon every senator to listen to the majority leader's call and to stand with our servicemen and women. But there's something else we can do right here today to demonstrate that this body doesn't have to be locked in partisan gridlock to demonstrate that bipartisan cooperation is possible and to demonstrate that our veterans are truly not the subject of partisan dispute but are separate and deserve to be treated fairly, deserve to have the commitments, the promises we made to our veterans honored. And that is this body can stop blocking the legislation that the House of Representatives has already passed, bipartisan legislation, to fund the VA, to fund disability payments so that we don't hold them hostage to what's happening in, in Washington. And accordingly, Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent that the Senate proceed to consideration of H.J. Res. 72, making continuing appropriations for veterans' benefits for fiscal year 2014 that the measure be read three times and passed, and that the motion to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table. Mr. President, reserve the right to object. Majority Leader. Mr. President, the distinguished senator from Texas has stated again what has already been talked about here a lot, and that is a piecemeal approach to funding our government. As do most Americans, we Democrats support the purpose of this bill to fund the Veterans Administration. 
But there's no reason for us to have to choose between this important government function, disease control, NIH, highway safety, FBI, poor children, workplace safety, or protecting the environment. We could do all these things that the House Republican leadership would just allow the House to vote on the Senate pass measure and end the shutdown. Everyone knows the votes are there. Our position is simple. Open the government, pay our bills, and then we'll be happy to negotiate about anything. We need to end this government shutdown. Now, Mr. President, first of all, my friend talks about these five families who are in bereavement, and that is an understatement. Five sons, husbands, friends were killed over the weekend. Providing the funding that my friend requests would not enable DOD to pay death gratuity for the families. Of 17 members, five over the weekend, we've had others die, who've given their lives to protect the nation since the shutdown began on October 1st. 17. This is but one example of how the Senator from Texas' efforts to fund the government on a piecemeal basis doesn't work. If the Speaker allowed the House to pass the Senate continuing resolution, the Department of Defense would have the authority that it needs to bring families to Dover, Delaware, to receive the remains of their families and pay the death gratuity benefits. The junior senator from Texas expresses concern for Americans' veterans. But his consent request addresses only some of the things in which the American people through their government have committed to help our veterans. Let me quote from the remarks of the senator from Connecticut, Senator Murphy. He gave those remarks on the 3rd of October. Here's exactly what he said. I would note that I believe the resolution the Senator is offering and suggested be passed provides only partial funding for the VA. There is no funding here to operate the national cemeteries, no funding for the Board of Veterans' Appeals, there's no funding for constructing VA hospitals and their clinics, there's no funding actually to operate the IT system that the entire VA needs in order to continue going forward. So, Mr. President, there couldn't be a better example of why we are involved in this, in this, Why couldn't we just open the government? Veterans benefits have our former colleague, former senator from Georgia, Max Cleland, a decorated disabled American veteran who runs the cemeteries, do his job. He can't do that now. Let's get it all over with. Let's have the NIH go forward. Let's have the Centers for Disease Control, the Park Service. We can't have this piecemeal approach because you wind up with the same situation we've now find ourselves. We want to do something for the veterans, but it doesn't take care of much of what the veterans need. So, Mr. President, I ask that my friend's um, amendment be modified, that the joint resolution as amended be read a third time passed, and the motion we consider be considered made and laid on the table with no any reaction or debate. This amendment is the text that passed the Senate and is a clean, continuing resolution for the entire government. Everything. Veterans, their cemeteries, their benefits, everything. And is something that is already over in the House and reporting has the support of a majority of the members of the House representatives. So I would ask my friend to really surprise the world, surprise the country, and let's say I agree. Modify it. Let's fund the government. And then, Mr. President, as we have said, I have said, everyone listen. We're happy to, when the government is open, when we can pay our bills, to sit down and talk about anything they want to talk about. It doesn't matter. No restrictions. So modify his request. Mr. President, reserving the right to object, I would ask unanimous consent that the majority leader and I be able to engage in a colloquy so that we may perhaps be able to, as the majority leader said, surprise the world by finding some avenues of bipartisan cooperation. Mr. President. Is there objection? Mr. President, uh, I am happy to sit down and talk to the Senator, his office or my office. The point we have right here today is that we need the government open. And with all due respect to my friend, 
the junior center from Texas. Um, I want to say this in a most uh, respectful way. He and I, with the dialogue back here on the Senate floor, we're not going to work this out. I have asked that the Senate open so that everyone can have benefits. The veterans measure that he proposes leaves many veterans out in the cold, out in the cold, including the families of 17 of our servicemen, families who were killed since this came into effect, this shutdown. So, uh, Mr. President, we'll go as we have. Um, I, I, I object to his proposal. I assume he'll object to mine, and then we'll go through the 10 minutes per person and see what happens later today. But I do, I'm happy to sit down and talk to the president in my office, his office, any place he suggests, privately or publicly. Objection is heard. Mr. President, was there a... Will the senator so modify his request? Mr. President, just a clarification. Was there objection to the request that, that we be able to engage in a colloquy? I wasn't clear to yes. what the majority leader was yes. objecting. Uh, the senator is correct on that. The Back to the normal order of 10 minutes each side. Is there objection to the modified request? Well, Mr. President, reserving the right to object, uh, I will note with regret that the majority leader objected to engaging in a discussion, to engaging in negotiations here on the Senate floor. I, I think that is unfortunate. So I will promulgate the questions that I would have asked him directly, and he may choose whether or not he wishes to answer them. The majority leader read from comments that Senator Murphy made on the Senate floor suggesting that the House bill funding the VA was not broad enough. I would note in my office we have drafted legislation that would fund the VA in its entirety. And if his objection it is, is it is not broad enough, I will readily offer that I would happily work with the majority leader to fund every bit of the VA as it is right now today, and we could introduce that bill. Indeed, I would be happy to have it labeled the Reed Cruz bill and to give lead authorship to the majority leader. Would the so Senator yield for a question? I would be happy to yield for a question. Would the Senator be willing to take care of the 560,000 veterans who are federal employees, many of whom have now been furloughed? I thank my friend from Illinois from that question, and indeed, I enthusiastically support the proposal that the House unanimously passed to give back pay to federal workers, and indeed, I, I, I would ask a, a question of, of the minority, assistant minority leader, whether the Senate will even vote on that proposal, because there are eight bills funding the federal government that are sitting on the majority leader's desk, and we have not been allowed to vote on any of them. If the senator from Texas is asking me a question, I would respond through the chair that uh, we have given the senator from Texas ample opportunity to completely fund the government, including all of the veterans who work for the federal government and all of the functions of the federal government so we don't run into the embarrassment of these poor families in their bereavement being denied most basic benefits that our government gives. He has a chance to do that over and over again, and I believe he has declined that opportunity. So he bears some responsibility for the unfortunate circumstances we face. And Mr. President, I would note the fact that there are some issues on which we have partisan disagreements does not mean there are not other issues on which we can come together. I would, would note- Would the Senator yield for a question? I, I am happy to yield to my friend for a question. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Through you to the Senator from Texas. I'm wondering if your motion includes the full funding of the VA medical system, which is a completely government-run, government-controlled healthcare system. I thank my friend for that question. As I said, I, I would readily support legislation fully funding the VA because the VA is a vital government system. It is a promise we have made, and it is unrelated to Obamacare. And, and my principal complaint this past week has been that, that the Democratic majority in this body is holding programs unrelated to Obamacare hostage in order to force Obamacare on everyone. We agreed for active duty military. If my colleague, just so I am clear, Mr. President, if I might, just to, to clarify so that I understand, because the senator from Texas has, in fact, made the ending of a private sector 
competitive health care system for up to 30 million Americans, part of what he wants to stop. I just wanted to be clear that the fully government-funded, government-run, with government doctors system through the Veterans Administration is something that you are advocating that we continue to fund through the federal government. I, I thank my friend from Michigan for that question. And, and yet again, the, the answer is yes. I believe we should fully fund the VA. And, and the two questions that I would promulgate. Is there objection to the modified request? Reserving the right to object. President. Majority Leader. Is there objection to the modified request? I would note that the Majority Leader seems not to want to engage in debate. So I object, and I hope that the Majority Leader Regular will order, start Mr. negotiating. President. Regular order. Objection is heard to the modified request. Is there objection to the original request? Yes, I object. Mr. President. Objection is heard. Using leader time.